What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me once again on The Michael Mar Show. Today is Thursday, June 11, 2020. This is Season 2, Episode 19. And without further ado, I'm here with local legend Jack Costco. We go all the way back to freshman year at Stonebridge High School. He's a former Belmont Ridger. Uh, now he goes and he plays football at Notre Dame College. But he's a big football player on a scholarship. No big deal. As always, big caliber guests. But Jack, say what's up to everyone. Man, thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, uh, he plays football at Notre Dame last year in his sophomore season. He recorded 53 tackles, eight sacks. My cousin said, this how you do it. Let the dope money hide in the music. Can't say goodbye to the trap. Got a whole brick of white in his rap. I used to stay on that. Who? Just bust her down at the wrist. Just bust her. And um, was it your freshman season? You guys went to the Division Two championship? No, we went to the Final Four. Final Four, but it was a semifinal game? Yeah. So, yeah, excuse me on that. But um, yeah, dude, so his team is stacked. He's got a loaded squad. Junior year, you got some big goals for yourself and for your team? Uh, yeah. Uh, personally, I'm trying to be an All-American. and uh, Yes, sir. Obviously, we want to win the national championship. We went to the Final Four my freshman year in the Elite Eight last year. So Yeah, it was pretty lit because I remember I was watching it on, um, on ESPN. Yeah. It was on ESPN. Wasn't it at like noon? Yeah. Was it a noon game? Yeah. yeah it was, I'm pretty sure it was a noon game. But yeah, definitely be on the lookout for Notre Dame College this season. It's going to be another loaded season for them. Now, you got a lot of a lot of seniors on the team, or did you have a lot of seniors last year? Uh, we lost uh, only a couple of seniors on defense, a couple of seniors on offense. Good players. Um, but our O-line is all seniors this year, so that'll be good. Our running back, who's a complete dog, shout out Jaleel. Uh, he's my grade, so we get him for another two years. Yeah. A quarterback, he's a redshirt sophomore, so he's technically my grade now. So, yeah, we got him for a couple more years. Nice, Ben. Well, I can't wait to see what you what you and your team accomplish uh, next season. But let's jump in and actually show you guys the schedule that Jack's team will be playing this year. I'm going to throw it up for you guys right now. So, uh, as you can see, on September 3rd, they actually kick off the uh, the season as at a nighttime or on a nighttime game or during a nighttime game, whatever, at Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri. Um, how do you think that game's going to go? And, and you said before we started recording, you haven't played Lindenburg, Lindenwood yet. No, right? uh, they are a nationally ranked team. Uh, so, I mean, it'll be a fun time going out there. We'll end up actually missing a week of school for it. We'll leave on Let's Tuesday. Go. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll uh, leave on Tuesday, and then uh, we'll spend the hotel on Wednesday, play the game Thursday, stay Friday, or stay Thursday night, and then leave Friday. Dude, that's electric. Kicking off the season on a Thursday night primetime game. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, that's, that's big juice right there. And then uh, week two, they go, and they're still on the road at Wheeling University. And um, that's a that's a conference game, MEC conference. Uh, you want to tell what everyone what the MEC stands for? Uh, it's the Mountain East Conference, basically just majority West Virginia schools, a couple of North uh, North Carolina now, and uh, Ohio schools. Yeah, how many how many schools from Ohio are in the MEC? Uh, well, Urbana actually just closed, so I think there's only they're closed forever. Yeah, they closed. Oh, sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't even know now anymore. But there's a handful. The only one. I think we might be the only one. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Um, and then week three, West Liberty University. Did you play West Liberty last year? Yeah. How did that game go? Uh, man, it was hot. It was a night game at West Liberty, and they're all the way up in the mountains. Uh, my parents' RV actually broke driving through the mountains. So, oh, no. <laughs> um, but, no, nah, yeah, that, that's a good game. That will be. Yeah. And then what about uh, week four, West Virginia State University? How do you think that game's going to go down? Uh, they, they get some dogs. Uh their field kind of sucks. We played at their field last year, and there was, like, rocks in the field, and it was not fun. Mud everywhere. Um, they got that Briar Woods field? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Briar Woods field was trash. You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that, they're also another good team. So, through four games, you're expecting 4-0? Hopefully, yes. 4-0, yeah, that's the goal. And then we get into week five. Um, they're at home, back-to-back, -back, University of Charleston and uh, Frostburg State University. Do either of those programs... Are they pretty solid? or? Uh, I've had four and a half sacks against Charleston the last two years. Dude, let's so, go, uh, Quick knucks. Quick knucks. And then Fro uh, Frostburg, you know, they just came into the league last year. They were uh, playing teams after they played us, and everyone gives us, gives us their best shot. So they thought they were all high and mighty. Nah. And then uh, we ended up, like, sweeping them by, like, 49 points or something. Dang, yeah. son. What is, uh, real quick, um, what's the most points you've won uh, in a college football game so far? Like one by? Yeah, or? one by, one by, excuse me. Uh, probably, probably, probably 40 something. So yeah. around that? Yeah. So Frostburg was almost number one. 
getting their ass kicked? Uh, I think they scored like two touchdowns or something. But yeah, uh, the highest scoring game was uh, Fairmont last year. I think we scored like sixty three points or something like that. Thanks. Yeah. Does um does Cam still play? He plays for Fairmont, right? No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't play for them anymore. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Um, all right, now let's get into, I think, I believe this is week seven. They, uh, Notre Dame travels to West Virginia, Wasilin College. Um, of course, in West Virginia, Buckhannon, West Virginia. In middle of nowhere. In middle of nowhere yeah. right there. How is that game going to go down? Is that going to be an easy one for you guys? You, uh, the past two years it has been. The year before I got there, they actually lost to them on our home field, so they were pretty upset about it. And then my freshman year, we went down there and uh, made a statement and we blew them out. Made so, a statement, yeah. so let's go. Um, and then after that, you play Glenville State at home. Um, Bradley actually, Bradley Block played there for a couple couple weeks, I believe. Um, that's really the only ties I have to that school, the only memory I have of that school. How is that game going to go down? We lost them last year, so uh, yeah. We'll so it's a revenge game. Looking for some revenge, yeah. But you lost them at their at Glenville. No, at home. Oh, so you played them back to back at home, like because you're playing them at home again this yeah, year. Yeah. So you got back to back home games against yeah. them. How, how was that game? Like, how much did you lose by? Uh, one touchdown. Oh, so it was close. Yeah. Real yeah. close, bro. Um, and then you wrap up the season. Well, actually, I skipped the Fairmont State game because I think we big talked game. about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. But I think I actually talked about that one before the Glenville game. But that is a night game as well, as you guys can see. Uh, time is to be announced, but it is once again, just like they kick off the season, a Thursday night showdown. Um, that's going to be loaded, bro. That's good. Like you said, that's going to be a big game. Oh, he's the rivals, yeah. That's one of the rivals? Yeah. Let's go, dude. Uh, what is their, like, style? Like, are they predominantly, like, a solid defensive team, a solid offensive team? Uh, well, last year, uh, my freshman year, they were we played in a pouring down rain, so it wasn't really a high-scoring game. But uh, that was a great game, actually. Their punter ended up uh, muffing a snap, and we ended up getting the ball in, like, the five-yard line. Let's go, dude. Um, but Fairmont, they they lost their quarterback, who was uh, – the quarterback at Loudoun County. Uh, Are you? A Taylor Cruz. Like that. Yeah. that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never played against them. No, we didn't. But uh, they they lo they're losing him now, so yeah. That should be. A, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's gonna be a good game, though. Yeah. Um, and then you wrap up the season against UNC Pembroke because you said Urbana, unfortunately, is no longer a school. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> UNC Pembroke, November seventh. That's a Saturday, Saturday daytime showdown. Um. And it's going to be at home. How, how are you looking to wrap up the season? Now, last year, because you guys were so good in the year before that, did you rest a lot of your starters the last game of the season, or was it just like uh, just all the boys? Basically, we only really rest people uh, once we start get up to a certain score. So it's not like we just take the – Take like a game, game off. off. Yeah, no. All right, true. Probably a good start yeah, right there. Helps a lot with uh, – Strength the schedule and how much how much you score on teams, how much you beat them by. So yeah, for playoff season. Sure. So, um, so yeah, guys, make sure to follow along to to some of uh, the Notre Dame college games, and if not, just at least follow along to Jack because my boy is gonna be shredding it this year. <laughs> but now let's stay on the football talk, but let's backtrack a little bit. We played Stonebridge football together. My man was on varsity like basically all four years, though. I mean, not as freshman year because we played freshman football together, but then sophomore, junior, senior, my boy was on varsity. Um, what is the most memorable game that you played in during your run at Stonebridge? Uh, I mean, the state championships are great, but honestly, the Battle of the Burns were always the best. Those I had electric. a lot of fun at those games. Yeah. yeah. Um, which Battle of the Bird game do you think stands out to you the most? Because you've played against Broad Run probably like five or six times, yeah. a couple times in the playoffs, a couple um, times in Battle of the Burn. My sophomore year, uh, when we were 3-3 three and three in a Broad Run was 6-0, uh, that was a big game when we beat them, and I ended up having a pretty crucial sack on a fourth down. Yeah. Um, so that was a big moment in my career. Uh, and then probably my my senior year uh, when we were playing against my boy Mitch. Uh, that was a, that was also another fun one. Griffiths? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Mitch and uh, no, no, that was my junior year then because uh, Meech was still there. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. That guy was a force. Yeah, that dude was, was a, a dog. That, that dude was a dog. Um. They actually got some studs on uh, Broad Run. They got a kid going to Michigan, right? This year is he still going to Michigan? That running back? Oh, uh, no, 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 he's a uh, he transferred actually. He was at a uh, Patriot or something. That's a Patriot Ken, High School. Ken Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. Yeah, he transferred. Uh, but no, uh, John Birchmeyer's little brother's got a lot of big offers. Dang. Yeah. Any like like where at? Uh, where to? Uh, Don't want to uh, no, honestly, I think I think he's got like Power Five schools. So, Dang, son. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. There's always been, like, 
a lot of really, really good talent yeah. at the high school level around here. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly just Broad Run or Stonebridge. I mean, Briar had a few kids like Trace, Alex uh, Carter, um, Matt Rowland, but mostly it's just Stonebridge and Broad Run and then mostly it's Stonebridge. Yeah. But um, yeah, dude, there's, there's a lot of NFL talent that have come out of like the Nova area. I mean, in decent. the last 20 years too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And dude, we got John Allen on the freaking Redskins, bro. <laughs> that's my boy right there. But um, so that's the most memorable game that you played in those Battle of the Burn games. And those have always been energetic. And if you guys have been to them, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have, you can obviously remember how lit they were. Uh, what is the funniest story that you can tell from your time at Stonebridge football or your time playing at Stonebridge? Uh, yeah, so Daniel Renault, our junior year, we were on the bus on our way home from an away game, and he was playing this iPhone game. And he said, uh, if anyone can beat my score, they get to slap me. <laughs> and Alex Best ended up beating his score by like 300, and he got to slap him. It was so oh, yeah, funny. Shout out Best, yeah. son. Dude, those bus rides home great. were just Very honestly great. legendary, dude. Yeah. Like, like, especially the freshman football ones. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. we can't talk about a lot of the stuff that we <laughs> talked about on those, but, yo, like, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people know what I'm talking Some about. Like, times. those stories were legendary. Um, shout out Stonebridge football. Shout out Mickey Tom Thompson, especially. I mean, yeah. that dude is just, he's a man of the people, dude. He's a man of the boys. He's just yeah. great guy, great, great coach, guy. legend. Um, now let's get into some, some AYFL talk real quick. Um, when did you start playing football? When I was five. That was your, and did you play a game, a season of flag, or did you just get right into tackle? Uh, that was back when AYFL had flag. So I played, I think it was two or three years of flag, and then I started tackle. But I was born to play football at this point because my dad got me a football the day I was born. So, really? Yeah. Hey, shout out, shout out, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Costco. Shout out, Kylie Costco as yeah. well. Honestly, I love your family. But we got, <laughs> we'll get into a little bit of that later on in uh, the random topic slash questions. But, um, yeah, so you were bred to play football from the jump. Pretty much, yeah. That's what it sounds like. You're, and your dad played football in college at uh, Lehigh. Lehigh. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Uncle. And your uncle? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. They played together? Yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah. That's that's pretty sweet, dude. Mm -hmm. That's real sweet. Um, Were any of your teams in AYFO solid? Like, did you have a championship run at yeah. all? Yeah, uh, I won with uh, uh, Kyle Brickard as my quarterback uh, on the Vikings in D League. There's the yeah, B League, yeah, B League. Those were always energetic as hell because you would play at a high school. Yeah. And you felt like you were yeah, like a legend. Right. <laughs> like you were like, yeah, I played at high school, yeah, dude. Yeah, I played at high school. Yeah, dude. you might as well be like thinking you're playing at like Lincoln Financial Field or yeah. something, son. Um, but yeah, that's that's a quick little recap of uh, Jack's football career and some of his accolades. Uh, like I said, please stay tuned and follow along. Follow him on Instagram. We'll have that um, in the description because he's always he's posting stuff, videos, updates. Yeah. But um, now let's get into a quick little UFC recap. I'm just going to ramble on real quick. UFC 250 was this past Saturday, like five days ago. It was on June 6th in Las Vegas at the Apex Arena. Uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley kicked off the pay-per-view by knocking the hell out of Eddie Wineland. Literally vicious. He went with a fake uppercut, straight, brutal. Guy was knocked out right from the millisecond it hit his chin. Um, Sterling or uh, Aljamain Sterling submitted Corey Sandhagen in the first round. Now he's going to get the title shot against the winner of Aldo and Jan. Um, Cody No Love Garbrandt absolutely assaulted Rafael Sunset with a knockout in the second round. Walk off. That was pretty nasty as well. And then, as expected, Amanda Nunes just ran through Spencer. I mean, like when Sam and I were talking about it, we were like, "There's literally no chance she loses, bro." Like she was like a minus like 700 Vegas had her at, which is just ridiculous. And then. Um, did you see the fight announcement or the Fight Island announcement the other day? No, I didn't. Yeah, so UFC Dana White announced that Fight Island is actually going to happen. They're going to, uh, it's going to be in on Yaz Island in Abu Dhabi. There's going to be four fight nights in 14 days, and it's going to be kicked off by UFC 251. What's going on over there? It's a groundhog. Right there. Oh, there's a groundhog. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we, we see some weird things. I remember one time, uh, I think it may have been Trevor's episode. We saw like like squirrels like chasing each other and like we just got totally sidetracked yeah dude i saw uh, a groundhog on the trail on the wnod trail yesterday and i stopped because i thought it was a statue and then when i stopped it just like took off running and i was like that i was like that is not a statue it was not a statue but yeah um fight island they said there's gonna be an octagon on the beach which is psychotic i mean like that that's gonna be awesome but that's just why i would even think about but yeah, uh, UFC 251, July 11th, the first card on Fight Island. It's going to be headlined by Kamaru Usman against Gilbert Burns. Co-main event, Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway, the rematch. And before that, there's three title fights on the card. We're going to have the bantamweight title on the line that Henry Cejudo just recently relinquished. 
which is uh, going to be against Jose Aldo, against Peter Yan. I mean, I'm pumped for those fights. I'm real, real excited. Three paper or three title fights in one night. That hasn't happened in like a year and change, probably. But um, you're slowly becoming a little fight fan yourself, eh? Yeah, I am. You got me into it. Yeah, dude. I mean, everyone's like, I feel like it's just such a like a fun sport to watch. And now, especially because they're on ESPN, it's so easy to yeah, watch. You know yeah. what I mean? Before you'd have to like go dumpster dive and to find it on like a random channel. But now it's like you just turn on ESPN and they're, they're either talking about it on the bottom or they're talking about it on the program. But yeah, um, I'll be covering that because that's not until July 11th. So I'll have a bunch of episodes in between that time. I just want to quickly give you guys an update if you didn't already know that. But now let's get into our third topic, which is video games. Because my boy Jack is a huge video game fanatic. Uh, his gaming setup is wild in his bedroom. He's got one of the most beautiful setups I've ever seen. Uh, what is uh, the favorite, your most favorite piece of equipment besides your Xbox itself mm. that you've gotten? Well, my computer probably then. The monitor? Yeah. Yeah, he's got, wait, uh, when did you get the monitor? You wanna tell everyone? Um, I got it, what, a couple, three years ago? So you've had it for some time? Yeah. And it's holding up? Yeah, it's doing pretty well. I know, I'm thinking about getting an upgrade. I was gonna say, do you have any aspirations yeah. to get uh, get a new one? Yeah. If you could get, if I handed you an unlimited amount of money, what monitor would you go buy? Ooh, uh, I, think it's, I think it's like a, Asus Republic of Gamers or something just crazy like fast like ultra response rate high frequency uh, refresh rate stuff like that so yeah let's go dude yeah, I wish I knew more about that stuff because <laughs> it's not just Xbox he does a lot of PC gaming yeah I've a lot more, I haven't turned on my Xbox in like two weeks actually oh really so yeah. it's mostly PC stuff yeah. but when you play PC can you still like talk to people that are playing Xbox yeah so like I could I have my Xbox linked to my PC so like when you invited me to a party the other day I could have joined from my computer Dang, that's pretty. That's pretty electric, yeah. dude. Um, how long would you say it took you to like us like assemble all the things that you have in your room? Like, oh, like what, think, how long was the project? I should ask. I've been doing it for years, man. I think I really got into gaming when I was probably about like 13, 14. And I've been just upgrading my setup ever since over time. Yeah. yeah. I remember we used to always go to Jackson, the Xbox 360, bro. <laughs> playing playing NCAA 14. Yeah. Dude, those final scores would be like 87 to 95. That was great. Those were absolutely legendary. But uh, second video game question that I have for you is um, what video game have you spent the most amount of time playing in your life? It's a hard one because I've spent so much time playing games. But uh, my Madden's, I have a lot of time in Madden's over the last five years um but there's a pc game called rust that i have like 1600 hours in 1600 so uh yeah that's a that's a game where i get made fun of for having 1600 hours not because it's a lot because it's a little what compared to other people that have played yeah, the game yeah. what's the most that you've seen like on like the leader leader bird leader board uh, charts? like forty nine thousand. Forty nine thousand. Yeah, it's like, like almost a year i was gonna say i don't even know the math like Forty nine thousand. it's crazy it's crazy yeah sheesh son that is yeah. that is madness i wish i could see how much i played gta 5 because that was definitely the one that i spent the most amount of time on but i have no clue i don't even think the 360 can they might be able to give you those no, analytics I don't, I don't know. they can't i don't think so probably not i don't know but um video game topic number three or um question in the video game section we got a big NHL rivalry. Yes, this spans sir. back to like freshman year. Like I said <laughs> at the start of the episode, we met each other freshman year while we were playing football. And we would always go over to Jack's house, like after school, in between practices, just whenever we really could. And uh, Costco and I used to play NHL and they were the most raw and intense games. Yep. And the trash talk yeah, would just right. be going left and right. <laughs> but I mean, like every time we hopped on the sticks and we were playing, everyone knew it was gonna be a showdown. Yeah. I mean, it was either like five to four, he won in overtime or something like that. But um, we definitely got to play again soon because we both have NHL 20. Yep. And uh, I just got an Xbox, you guys didn't know, like, a couple months ago, and I bought NHL 20. We made a World of Shell team together. Yeah. Uh, we actually got to pick it back up because we haven't played in like a month at least. Yeah. I mean, I've been slacking, dude. I've been real slacking on the box. But have you been playing at all, the show? No, no, I haven't. I've been playing computer games. One of, uh, one of our games, actually, so like, there's a wipe schedule that goes on for computer games, right? So uh -huh. like, the Rust game, it wipes every month. Um, so it resets everything and people always ask like why would you want everything to get reset, but it, it keeps the game alive. Yeah, um, and so uh, There's this game called escape from Tarkov that hasn't wiped in nine months and it wiped like two weeks ago So we've oh. just been playing that like crazy. So. He's been grinding on it. Yeah, let's go We actually got to hop on the shelf soon though. Yeah, I feel like I'm just not getting my money's worth on the Xbox <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I paid all the money for it. and I'm just like very dollar Netflix account. <laughs> exactly um <laughs> But yeah, that's our video game talk. Um, 
if you guys want to get whooped in NHL, hit one of us up. Yeah, well, I'll be gladly to hand out ass whoopings for free. Especially you, Jimmy. Yeah, especially you, Jim. Uh, <laughs> I haven't played Jimmy and Shell and Bricks. But, um, all right, now let's get into some random topics slash questions. Random topic number one or question number one. Your favorite meal that your mom makes because Mrs. Costco is a phenomenal cook and she's always cook like chefing it up for everyone. Like not just you. Yeah. I mean, whenever you have people over, the, the the food is the spread is insane. She doesn't stop. She doesn't stop cooking ever. Um, favorite meal? I mean, I, I love the chicken and the rice for sure. She's uh, she makes the food and then puts it in the fridge for me, so she doesn't have to worry about making it ever. But uh, yeah. she started to make really good quesadillas. That's crucial. Yeah. A good quesadilla is good crucial. Quesadilla. I actually had a quesadilla two nights ago at like three in the morning. Yeah. Wasn't that good. I'm sure your mom would <laughs> I'm sure your mom's quesadilla would shatter yeah. mine. She's trying to teach me to cook now too. You're not a big so, cooker? Like uh, you let her do most well, of it? Well, yeah, I let her do most of it, but now that we got a house in college now that she wants me to start cooking so yeah. I don't like go order Chipotle every day. So yeah. She's got knows if we if we had the capability and the accessories to do that, we're gonna do it yeah, we, we were like, every single yeah. time. <laughs> um, I wish I could see how much money I've spent total on Chipotle in my life. A lot. Cause like when you go, do you just get like like tell everyone your go to Chipotle order? Well, I used to get a lot. I used to get like two bowls at a time, but I've slowly matured at that over that. Um, and the older I get, the more stuff I add to it. But uh, I usually just get a uh, a burrito. Burrito guy. Uh, yeah, burrito or a bowl with the burrito in it. You get more out of that. Depends how hungry. And you make your own burrito. Yeah. Um, but just white rice, uh, no beans. Uh, usually chicken now. I, I rotate between chicken and steak, but yeah, chicken. Yeah. Uh, and corn and cheese. Sometimes lettuce if I'm feeling it. So. I just got yeah. hit the corn, dude. Like I didn't start getting oh. corn until like four or five months ago. Corn is so good. Because I used to just get that that basic stuff. I would just get chicken cheese rice and a little bit of lettuce but yeah. now i started throwing in like you said getting some beans like i feel like as you mature like, yeah, you, you start, start to get more stuff. Yeah, you start getting a little more things one thing i'll never come around to is onions i don't even know if they offer onions at yeah they do at chipotle they do uh, they get like the oh yeah yeah like the, they're not dice they're like the slices you yeah. Know? yeah i saw uh katie said in the group chat today like onions are like the most underrated vegetable or something yeah man i don't know about that are you yeah. an onion guy no uh well you responded to her too, didn't you? Yeah, you're I said like, you're stinky. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, I end up. I usually uh, like my, my parents make a lot of chili, so like there's always the onions. It's like by so, default. Like, yeah, I don't like like I'm okay with having some onions in the food, but like I don't like biting into an onion. Yeah, just like a straight yeah, up hunk yeah. of onion. Yeah. No. Yeah, I feel that, bro. Whenever I go to McDonald's, I get the McDouble, no onion. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's got to be like that. Yeah. Um, all right. What is the best story that you could tell us from all the trips that you've taken to your lake? Um, or your crib at the lake. Um, if you guys didn't know, he goes to Gettysburg a lot, and um, he also goes to Lake Ontario, which is a little bit more of a drive. Yeah. Um, how many times do you think you've been to Lake Ontario? I've been like a lot. I've been going there since I was like six. You always so, go to the same little spot. Yeah, we've got a, a, a mobile home up there in, yeah. a, in a trailer park. So. Um, that's the life, dude. Yeah, Mobile great. homes, like RVs, like that is just such a good like, I want one so badly, dude. Yeah. I want to go cross country in one so badly, but. Um, yeah, I probably, I don't know, I've probably been up there about, probably like a hundred times in my life. If, if, eh, around that, maybe. So how, how far of a drive is it? Uh, about seven hours. Whew. Yeah. It's not bad though. Yeah, no, it's not terrible. Once you get over like the seven and a half, eight hour hump, that's when it starts to feel like you're driving for like a yeah. couple days. Like my drive to school is like five and a half hours now and like, I feel like I do it like it's so often. Yeah, like, it's, it's, not it's that so bad. easy now, especially that I'm driving like six hour shifts for DoorDash now. But uh, yeah, um, shout out DoorDash, dude. Yeah, man, for real. That's the hustle. I was making like 25 bucks an hour yesterday. Dang, yeah. sheesh, dude. Yeah, let's no, go, right? dude. What's the biggest tip you've gotten from DoorDash? Uh, 36 bucks. Dang, so what were you delivering? Uh, the Last Supper? Uh, Rubino's Pizza. That'll do it. Yeah. That's expensive pizza, so if yeah. you can get that on, you know what I mean? Yeah. One thing leads to another. Um, guys, Costco is also, because he goes to the lake so much, of course, by default, he's a solid fisherman, as you'd expect. Um, question, fishing question that I have for you is what is your best fishing story or memory that you can tell? Your best uh, fishing encounter? So, uh, when I was younger, there's two. So when I was younger, uh, I was fishing, and uh, I was going to throw my line in the water and uh my dad was standing right behind me and this was back when he was like a big like sunglasses guy so he had these maui gyms on right maui and, gyms uh, are nice. yeah and uh i went and my pole hit him in the back of the head when i was going to throw it he freaked out he went forward 
and he leaned over the side of the boat and the Maui Jim's still in the water. No. And so luckily we have markers for when we catch a lot of fish, you throw a marker out and then you can just putz back to it yeah. and like throw the anchor if you have to. But luckily, so he threw the marker out and we had uh, some goggles and a diving, like a little like snorkel on the, on the boat. And he had to dive down. And when like, he all went swimming? Yeah, he went down like 13 feet and grabbed his belly chips. But he found him? Yeah. Let's go, dude. Yeah. That's pretty electric. Um, I actually have a story that's pretty similar to that, but it's not a happy ending. Um, when, when I was at the lake with Kyle, when I was at the lake with Kyle, um, Oh, didn't you lose Ray-Bans? Yeah, well, I didn't lose mine, but he lost his yeah. Ray-Bans, and they were literally, like, we were on the dock, so it's like it couldn't have gone far. Yeah. Of course, his drop down, they sink to the bottom, we go back inside, we get a scuba mask, and him and I sat out there with some other people, but we were the only ones searching for them for probably, like, an hour trying to find them. Yeah. Never found them, bro. Like, yeah. literally could not find them, which makes no sense that your dad found them in the middle of the water, and ours was, like, well, on the dock. you were at Deep dock. Creek, right? Yeah. yeah. The water's dark there. The water's really clear at Lake Ontario. Oh, really? Yeah, like, really clear. Yeah, dude, I've always wanted to go to, um, like a body of water that's like I want to bring you guys up Dude, uh, I would love to like, I was thinking for Father's Day I, I texted Damon and Kyle but Kyle said he can't so if you want to go you can go true I'll probably well, for Father's Day I'll probably I'll probably chill with my dad yeah. but, if, but if we could go another another time or yeah. something but se I mean seven hours when you go how often do you usually go for like a handful of days uh yeah so we'll probably leave on like a Thursday and come back either Sunday or Monday <clears throat> okay so you're there for like three days yeah, yeah so that's, that's worthwhile because like sometimes yeah. like people take like like I've, I've met people that come down to Radford for one night and yeah. it's like, that's no, just, it's like, point, yeah. it's like four and a half yeah. hours of driving. So you're spending like a quarter of the time driving than you are actually yeah. hanging out there, which just makes no sense. But your parents are in Gettysburg, right? Yeah. So what are they doing there? Are they just, just well, hanging out? Yeah. Just chilling at the camper. Cause they, they, they drive the RV to my games. And so they need a place to uh, park it like over the winter and in the summer. So yeah. we have, we've had this campsite in Gettysburg for like eight or nine years now so yeah, they just go up there all the time nice do they usually um like link up with people when they're down there like uh families? well so basically since it's like a campground uh it's like a seasonal campground so everyone that's like around us is there all season too so they've made friends over the years nice yeah that's a good time dude that honestly i mean I, I looked at your instagram some of the pictures of you fish in there yeah. and stuff at uh i think it was ponds yeah like Pond. ontario ponds marina yeah dude yeah. that looked like some good pictures dude. yeah honestly some real solid content right there yeah. but um now this is the final question that i have for you guys or that i have for costco before i get into the fact of the day and i'm excited for the fact of the day today um what is the most memorable professional sporting event that you've ever attended if you could think because you've been to a lot of like Eagles uh, games, yeah, we Redskins go to the games. we go to the Eagles Redskins game every year. Um, most memorable. Uh, I've been to some Caps games, but I've never been to any like playoff Caps games or anything. But uh, I would say I went to Lincoln Financial Field to watch the Eagles Redskins two or three years ago. It was, it was Carson Wentz's sophomore season when he was really good. I think we were still yeah, it was like three years ago. Yeah, and. Uh, that was a great game to go to because I had never been to Lincoln Financial Field. I've seen it, but I never went to it. Yeah. Right. And so when we went there, I went with uh, my uncle and like all of his buddies because they're all in that uh, Philadelphia like area kind yeah. of. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Me and my dad went. Big gas. Remember at an Eagle Ridge or not Eagle Ridge? Redskins. Red Eagles Redskins Eagles. Eagles, 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 Eagles. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna throw up the picture uh, at the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to stay till the end uh, when I do the outro. I'll throw up the picture because I came across that the other day, dude. That was legendary. That's my first picture on my Instagram, I think, right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's iconic, yeah. then. That's real iconic. I have no clue who won that game. Probably the Eagles. Eagles. <laughs> yeah, probably the Eagles. And um, we were gonna cover the Redskins schedule or the Eagles schedule, and um, but we decided to do Jack's Notre Dame schedule instead. But the Redskins play the Eagles the first and last game yep. of the year. That's exciting. I'm pretty sure week one this is in the league. Is in Philly? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's in Philly. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, that's kind of weird, though. First and last game, because I remember last year, like, sometimes you play the same team in your division within, like, three, four weeks. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we, say, we play the Giants. Kind of, eh, it's kind of weird doing yeah, that. Yeah, it is really weird doing that. But, um, I don't know. I'm pretty optimistic about the NFL this year. The NFC East is going to be another toss-up. I mean, definitely I would say the Eagles – or the favorites, yeah. or the Cowboys, yeah, maybe. Yeah, Cowboys. But um, keep an eye on those Redskins, Jack. <laughs> keep an eye on those skins. And everyone listening, keep an eye on those skins, because, uh, I mean, we're coming eventually. I mean, it may not be this year, may not be next year, may not be until 2037, <laughs> but we're coming. We're coming. We're, we're coming. It's our year. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I've never seen a winning season in my life as a Redskins fan. I mean. That's not true. Maybe one. One, two, three. Yeah, we went like what, ten and six, like nine and seven. No, you went to a playoff game, right? When we lost. Yeah, we lost. Well, I've, been, I've seen two. Uh, one time, Kirk led us against the Packers, I believe, uh, and yeah. then um, 
then RG3 to the Seahawks. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure we played the Seahawks in like 2007 in the playoffs again. In law- I haven't seen a playoff win, I should have said. Yeah. I haven't seen a playoff win in my life. Um, now let's get to the fact of the day. Like I said, I'm excited for this one. Oreos, everyone's favorite snack, just about everyone's favorite snack, have a 71 to 29% cookie to cream ratio. So 71% cookie, 29% cream. Oreos were released to the public on March 6th, 1912, so over 100 years ago. What do you think about Oreos, man? You big Oreo guy? I'm not, actually. What about cookies and cream? I'm not. I'm a big cookie guy. I'm not a big Oreo guy, though. Yeah, I know you're a big, um, like, cookie dough guy. Yeah. My man makes... I don't even know how, because you just use the basic Toll House cookie dough that you buy yeah. at the store, yeah. but your oven is, like, majestic. <laughs> your, your oven is literally, like, from the future, bro, because he does it the same way I try to make it, and they do not turn out tasting similar at all, which just makes no sense. Are you not a cookies and cream, like ice cream guy, or like? Oh, no, 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 I like like cookies and cream ice cream, but I'm just not a- Just like strip Oreos? I don't like eating strip of Oreos, yeah, something yeah. I mean, yeah, I only like eating, like I can only maul Oreos if they, um, <laughs> if <laughs> if they're in milk, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can't just like sit there and too. pack down some yeah. Oreos, like straight out the package. But um, yeah, guys, that's the fact of the day. Shout out Oreos. Um, that's all I gotta say. Today, my host was Jack Costco. I had a great time doing this with him. We ran for 31 minutes. Do um, you have any clothing, closing uh, statements or shout outs you'd like to make anyone? We shout out the team, shout out the family. Yeah, shout out the team, shout out NDC, shout out my uh, shout out my mom and dad, my sister. Yeah, yeah, of course, shout out the Costco family. Like I said, amazing people, honestly, <laughs> stellar people. Uh, very, very friendly. I actually painted Jack's mailbox the other day. Do you mind <laughs> I didn't even know that? about that. No, I was at school. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah James and I were walking down Winter Grove, and uh, your mom was walking with Mrs. Showalter. And I went across the street, and I was talking with them. And then um, Mrs. Showalter hired me, and then when I was on my way to do that, your mom came outside. Or your mom was already on the porch, and she was like, Michael, like, please like, just yeah. do ours. But, um, yeah, great. It was a great time talking with her, too. Yeah. We were literally just painting there, just chit-chatting with your mom for a while. But, um, yeah, definitely want to catch up with them soon. I yeah. feel like... The last couple of times you've been to your house, they haven't been there. No, they have not. Which, uh, I mean, I love vibing with them. Yeah, I know. Always, Everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, guys, Jack was my my uh, guest today on Thursday, June 11, 2020, Season 2, Episode 19. Thank you very much for listening or watching, whichever one you did. Um, please come back. Stay tuned for more. Like and subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Share with your friends and family. But that's all I got to say. And, as always, stay clean, stay safe, and stay tuned. First play from about the 12, and there is Vic, as you talked about, John, rolling and launching downfield for Deshaun Jackson, who accelerates, caught the opening play, and all the way for a touchdown! 88 yards! What? Bro, what are you talking about, man?